Dabo Sweeney's decision making when it comes to participation in the transfer portal is an unforgivable thought process to me. It has been last year. It didn't take like people are just catching up now. I've been saying this for two years about you know you got to play the game, you got to adapt, you got to be able to to be able to do this um, and participate in this. And I and Grace, you can help me out here. Before I continue cooking, I'm going to let you into the kitchen a little bit. What is it that Dabo Sweeney is against? Like, explain that to me. Like, why doesn't he like transfers? Because they're quitters at their other place? Like, what, what's his thought on this? I think he just, I don't know. I mean, I think he just really, truly believes in the high school process. And, and he's gone viral for what I think have been pretty uh, laughable, for lack of a better term, comments about, like, the portal is in my locker room. Um, and I think the thing that's got to be the most frustrating if you're a Clemson fan is that he doesn't need an entire new roster of transfers. You need a solid wide receiver and an offensive lineman. And, and maybe that's it, honestly, on offense, just someone who can stretch the field vertically and help out Cade Klubnik and someone who can help along the offensive line. You don't need 15 or 20 transfers. He just needs a few. Um, but I don't know. And I don't know if this is the reset that he'll need to reevaluate that stance or if he's just going to dig his heels further. Um, but it's been, I don't know. It, it's been a little bit surreal to watch, honestly, just to see it all happening in real time. Well, a- Alabama's kind of, the model, right? I mean, if yeah. you don't, they haven't like Nick Saban doesn't love the transfer portal, but he he doesn't. He's not against. He plugged some holes. He plugged. He the literally left played in the national year. championship right. game with the same exact scenario that Clemson has right now, which is we need a receiver. They went and right. got one. Jamison Williams came in and almost. Like it was a Heisman contender, and they probably would have won the game if he didn't blow his knee out in the national title game. And I'm going through the list here of available transfer receivers just in the offseason. Um, and I'm and I'm looking here, and I see, of course, uh, Keon Coleman is going to be the number one example of this because he is on Florida State's roster and scored three touchdowns on Monday, and Florida State looks awesome. But he's not the only one. Uh, A.D. Mitchell went to Texas. Uh, Dante Thornton. Went to Tennessee. Dorian Singer, who was going to score a lot of touchdowns this year, is at USC. Jamichael Sturdivant at UCLA. Um, who am I? Dante Cephas, who I think he scored in the Penn State game. If he didn't, he's going to score touchdowns. There's just a Jordan Hudson went to SMU. There's just so many different examples of JoJo Earl at TCU. I'm looking at it right now. It's just Jimmy Horn to Colorado. It's just insane to me that they weren't involved in any of these recruitments or trying to do it. And like, listen, there is the unspoken thing with Dabo and grace. I need you to, to check me if I'm wrong. Okay. But he has been outwardly critical of the entire notion that his players should be paid. Okay. Um, and I think that there is a certain, and, and I know that he's okay with NIL, but like the idea of compensating athletes, he's not the, the, uh, parade leader on let's compensate the players. I think that's a fair thing to say. He said at one point that if they ever got paid from the colleges, he would quit coaching. And there is a certain notion that in the transfer portal that you have a bunch of kids who are on the take or people who are wanting to be in a situation where they're compensated more than uh, or more fairly than they are at their previous stop. But there's also a secondary notion, which is if a player leaves a program, and they didn't get in trouble or weren't dismissed from the team that they are quitting on their brothers or that they are not dedicated to the cause that they committed to out of high school and thus makes them some sort of less bought in player that isn't good for a locker room. And I certainly could probably get on that board. If you're one of these coaches that says, I'm not building my entire roster out of it. That said, isn't he doing a disservice to the Clemson football team, the players that he loves, the guys that he recruited out of high school by not doing everything he can as the CEO of that program in order to situate them with a roster that puts them in a position to be who we expect them to be? Because now they don't have those transfers on the roster. So those cancers or whatever you know is said internally um, aren't ruining the but they lost to Duke because they didn't have somebody to throw the ball to. And I don't even want to talk about the developmental stuff. Like wasn't Bo Collins, a top 15 player. Yeah. They have players on their team. So there's one issue of, they didn't develop the guys that came into their program as highly recruited wide receivers. Because if you go back and you look at Clemson's hat past, I mean, Justin Ross, Sammy Watkins, who am I forgetting? Like I'm forgetting a T Higgins. Yeah. There's a million of them. 
Um, and now they're not developing their players. And then when they don't develop their players, they are not willing to engage in the sport in the way that everybody else is engaging in, which is going to leave them with gaping holes in the roster. While other teams who would have had gaping holes in the roster in the past, that would only be able to be fixed through the rec- you know normal recruitment process can plug and play immediately. So my notion of Dabo Sweeney, and this is my thought is if you are not going to play the game with everybody else and you were no longer fit to be Clemson's coach, like, I think it's that simple. And like, that is like a, you know, and I'm sure Cam's going to clip that. And it's going to go all over YouTube or whatever, or, or Twitter. And like, he probably should, but like, if you don't do everything in your power as the head coach of Clemson football to make the best possible team for your, for the players on your team, your fans and your university, then you're not doing your job as the head coach. And this is, well, go ahead, Grace. I just like, oh my gosh, this Ari, it's <laughs> Ari fired Dabo Sweeney week one. Yeah. Um, no, not fire him, but he needs to adapt or he's not. It, and I, I'll, I'll agree. The one trait that they always say that Nick Saban's great at. What's the number one thing that everybody always says yeah, that Nick Saban's Yeah, he's good elite at. at adapting. And Grace, comment after this, but, and it's not like he's at a place where you can't take transfers. Stanford. Stanford's not going to take a lot of transfers to high academic schools. They're not going to take a ton of transfers. That's not the Clemson can, obviously they're going to get kids in. So, um, so yeah, great. So again, it's a program you've been around. Do you think it's just, I, I think it's more development. These are my guys. I sat in their living room. I told their parents that they're going to come in and have an opportunity to develop. I don't want to bring in a guy that's going to bump them from that spot. I think it's more of that. I, I don't know. Grace, you just take it from there. I think that's part of it. I re- I remember a couple of years ago, this was before, I think it before they changed the rule where you could play immediately. And then before the transfer portal got so as big as it is now, but I do vividly remember sitting in a press conference one time and him saying that he would not bring a one-off into his program, um, like via the graduate transfer route. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think to your point, Ari, part of it is, these are my guys, you know, these are the ones that we're going to develop. I think a little, I think a lot of it is just stubbornness. Um, Dabo has, you know, very, been very outspoken and I think he wants to show that there's a path. This is just my opinion, a path forward, uh, with his way. Um, but there's totally a path where even if he wants to protect his locker room, even if you feel like you don't want to bring in someone from wherever, go get an FCS guy, you know, that's go get South Carolina did that juice Wells. And he, he lit people up last year. Like there is, if you're worried about the culture, whatever, go get an FCS guy who maxed out at his last place and everyone's happy to see, take the next step and go get an opportunity at the biggest stage. So I don't know, but it's, it's going to be fascinating to see if he, uh, amends this at some point. And there, there there've been times in the past too, where I have scoffed at the notion of culture and all those things. And I want to say that like, I am 100% on board with the fact that you want your players to love each other. You want the coaches to feel personal responsibility. Um, You want your players to earn everything that they get. And then when they get it, they feel like they earned it by doing things the right way. Like, I think that what Dabo stands for in like a vacuum makes sense. Like, I I think that a lot of times he says things that don't make sense. But if you really try to like sit back and understand where he's coming from, like he's not crazy. His motives, Um, I think are always, I think that he's, Yeah. That said, I think that we are looking at a team that just lost to Duke. So what's that doing for your culture? Where's your culture now? Like, do you have a great culture or would you have had a better culture if Keon Coleman was on your team and you won? Like that to me is like, what's the best thing for culture? Everybody having a good time and everybody winning. And it's just your responsibility as Clemson's head coach is to win football games. Um, and I know that there's, you know, development of young men, kids getting their, their diplomas and all the things that make you feel nice and fuzzy inside when you're watching a documentary. And I know that those things are important. And of course I want men to be better than they were when they got to a place. Of course, nobody gives a shit about any of that except winning and losing people (laughs) who are listening to our podcast right now. Don't care how awesome they're, they are at academics or how, like if, if a player on the team has a three, eight instead of a three, four, they don't, we don't write about it. Why don't we write about it? There's no academic writer at the, we don't know. You want to know why? Because no one cares. (laughs) 
Great. All right, that's your new job. You're, I know. You're, I know. You're, 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 I know it makes you queasy. I know it makes you queasy, Mitch, because you're a Mr. <laughs> Academia. Everybody, I'm not sure you knew this, but Mitch went to Vanderbilt. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying, like, don't take that as me saying that education is not important. Of course it is. I want everybody to do everything they can to better themselves. We all went to school. Right. That, that is assumed that we all That want. is assumed. And I don't want it to be like, ah, oh, he thinks, but that isn't what a coach is paid for. It's not. It's great if you can win and have that. And I'm not saying that you bring players in that stink at school or don't care about it, but you need to do everything in your power to meet your university who's cutting your checks. Is Clemson private? They're public, right? They're public. So he's a government employee? He I'm sure is. he's the highest paid uh, person, highest paid government employee in the state of South Carolina. My thumb is a dot and my... Index fingers dot. Let's connect those on our own there. Okay. Just <laughs> you have a responsibility uh to do something and he's not doing it if he's not gonna participate in the sport the way that it's constructed. You might not like the rules, you might not like the way it is. You have to do it. The same way that like at my job, I like writing and podcasting. I don't like three hour phone calls with Mitch sometimes, but I have to take them. <laughs> <laughs>